A lot of famous people have inconvenient photos they'd prefer didn't exist. But we have a solution, direct from the USSR. Fixed! You're welcome, Donald. See you in 2024. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley. It's the Harry Gold Show. With your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Now, a lot of livelihoods have been tanked by incriminating photographs, but the Soviets had this problem solved decades ago. As soon as someone was unfriended by the state, they'd be airbrushed right out of every photo in existence. Modern PR people could learn from that kind of ingenuity. Take this photo, for instance. Looks like Donnie wasn't the only POTUS to take a happy snap with your boy Jeffrey. For anyone unaware, the Anthony Bourdain look-alike with the smug Pepe expression is Jeffrey Epstein, famous for the fringe conspiracy theory that he wasn't assassinated by the Illuminati. I don't know what kind of tinfoil hat-wearing crank you'd have to be to believe he actually topped himself, but... They're out there. However, Jeffy also did some pretty demonetizable stuff. As Gilbert Gottfried aptly observed, it was not very poggers at all. So Bill would probably be better off acting like they never met. Rebuild the screen behind him, conjure up more table and keyboard, and we have to imitate the compression to make it look convincing. Now that's a successful Epsteinectomy. Sorry, Jeffrey. Looks like you're going to the shadow realm. No. I feel your pain. But now we've got a weirdly framed photo. Why would Bill Clinton be taking that picture with a TV? I'll tell you why. To capture a very important moment. <laughs> Number 3. Burger King Foot Lettuce The last thing you'd want as a Burger King worker is to be publicly humiliated for being a blithering imbecile. But as it turns out, that might be what you get. Well, here's a photo that someone out there would rather forget. This clever cookie posted this snap of himself to 4chan, and in mere moments the forum figured out where it was taken, called the Burger King, and informed the local press. Not only was the chump canned within 24 hours, but because of a popular video by the YouTuber Chills, his stupidity became a meme as well. But we can undo this little PR disaster. It's just a matter of cleaning away the lettuce. Now instead of Burger King foot lettuce, it's Burger King Bigfoot. Fixed. <laughs> This is the picture that turned former comedian Al Franken into former politician Al Franken. Now Al is clearly a guy with enormous respect for women, so what was going on here is he was just respectfully polishing Leanne Tweeden's helmet as a sign of respect. Respectfully. <laughs> Here's another one that could have been a problem. I'm sure you recognize Barry Obama, the first Irish president, but it's the chap to his right for whom we are calling in the commie cavalry. Meet Louis Farrakhan, religious leader, bowtie enthusiast, and all around fun guy that made a big splash in the 90s for giving such colorful quotations as Hitler was a very great man. Hanging around with a guy famous for hating Jews, gays, and just about everyone else may or may not be the best look. But fortunately for Barry, journalism and ethics are a Venn diagram that look like the Hooters logo. So the photo didn't hit the web till after he left office. Even so, this would have been an easy solve. First of all, we need to Thanos snap Farrakhan the heck out of there. But that doesn't just mean filling in war. There are people behind him. But we can rebuild them. We have the technology. But if you close your eyes, <laughs> does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? But of course, we can't just have a weird empty space. No, comrades, you see, the photo you thought you saw it was a big misunderstanding. Obama and his people were at a cinema showing Shrek, with some standees of the characters in the lobby. In reality, you just misheard. Obama wasn't posing with Louis Farrakhan, he was posing with Lord Farquaad. Simple as that. <laughs> Oh, Prince Andrew, that's not very cash money of you. I suppose it's a good thing for the royal family that it never really happened, isn't it? In actuality, it was just Andy spending some perfectly legal and above board quality time with a friend. Or maybe his other friend. Fixed. <laughs> Ever hear that John McAfee, the libertarian antivirus guy, was in jail for tax evasion? And tweeting stuff like, Getting subtle messages from US officials saying in effect, We're coming for you, McAfee. 
We're going to kill yourself. I got a tattoo today just in case. If I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. I am content in here. I have friends. The food is good. All is well. Know that if I hang myself, I lie Epstein. It'll be no fault of mine. Bom bom bom. Da 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 It's an indisputable fact that in order to be a legit rapper, you either need a fake name that sounds like it was made up by an infant, Snoop Doggy Dog, Puff Daddy, Flavor Flav, or a real name that sounds like an obese 18th century wine merchant, Chancellor Jonathan Bennett, Jonathan Lindale Kirk, Calvin Cortazar Brodus Jr. It's in this latter category that we find Jacques Berman Webster II, aka Travis Travis Scott Burger Scott. Now before old Trav was famous for face rubbing and criminal negligence, this was probably the most notorious image of him. See, here's something you need to know about the Burger Boy. Man gets a new Lamborghini, it's brown. Teams up with Air Jordans, they're brown. Need something for the red carpet? That's nice, but do you have it in brown? In other words, it's possible that he might have a favourite colour. So naturally, when the man decided to go as Batman on Halloween, you know he was going to get creative with the colour palette, and a six foot cockroach is one of the nicer comparisons furnished by the worldwide peanut gallery. The man was so resoundingly clowned upon that he dropped Instagram altogether. Now let's see if we can't unhappen that for Scotty Boy. He never went to any Halloween party as a funky sepia Batman, that would be silly. No. So Travis simply decided that he wanted a costume in his favourite colour and made the most sensible choice. A large bottle of Hershey's chocolate syrup. That's another regrettable photo, fixed. <laughs> Of course, as you all know, this is the photo that got Harambe cancelled. If only that dumb gorilla hadn't been about to turn the kid into coleslaw, we wouldn't be in this mess. But don't you see? If you just squint a little harder, you'll see that's not a child he's about to pulverise, it's just an exceptionally large banana. Nothing to get upset about at all. <laughs> According to our CCP overlords, Tiananmen Square never happened. Who's Tiananmen? What even is a square? American capitalist propaganda, that's what. There was never any protester, there was never even anything to protest. Just a kid playing with his toys. That's all. <laughs> Just about everyone has seen this album cover before, it's a classic. Of course it doesn't really mean anything, it's just tepid shock value posing as a shallow imitation of poignant wit, though I suppose for Nirvana that's entirely on brand. I may have started the Rusky business early and made a tasteful tweak to this photograph ahead of time by the way, but this is the hitch. As the kid grew up, so did the amount of cash he was chasing. Even though Spencer Eldon has spent his life reveling in being one of the music world's most famous photographs, he's now suing Nirvana for making him out to be, uh, a streetwalker, so to speak, and featuring him in explicit adult content, illegally featuring someone who is not an adult. Is that euphemistic enough, Susan? So ignoring the fact that no one would ever be able to tell he was the baby if he himself did not keep reminding everyone, I think this is a problem that we can make go away. Now our preemptive sanitization pretty much took care of the X-rated part of Mr. Eldon's gripe, but to really solve this thing we need to start by obliterating that dollar bill. But what goes on the hook? Well what do babies like? Coco Melon? Peppa Pig? Roblox? I'll tell you what he wants. That's right, it's either that or a yummy Dido Buddies dinosaur nugget. <laughs> Kathy, 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 remember this picture? I sure do, because I had a cartoon published about it, only to find out everyone and their dog had the same damn idea. It turns out not everyone is as amused by Isis's execution methods as Kathy Griffin anticipated, resulting in her career being temporarily vaporized. One gutless apology, terrible haircut, and gutless retraction later, Kathy's back to doing whatever it is she usually does. But this is definitely a crisis we could have averted. The problem is, everything here is controversial. Trump, ISIS, beheading, all too dicey. Instead, I say she held up something uncontroversial, like a puppy. There's nothing divisive about Mr. Poofers here, unless she falls back into old habits and beheads the puppy as well. Wait, Kathy, stop! <laughs> 
In the midst of Activision Blizzard imploding over a colourful variety of scandals, a photo came out of Blizzard developers in a room called the Cosby Suite. Seeing as it predates things really hitting the fan for Cosby himself, odds are the name is a coincidence. But that doesn't mean it's not a bad look. So we can repair the unfortunate optics by changing the photo to one of someone the internet is unironically less likely to get upset about. Fixed. <laughs> Good gravy. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell. Funny thing is, they'd all sort of cancel each other out if it weren't for the fact they're at Windsor Castle. Yet another problem for Prince Andrew. Look, there's really no turning this around, so we're going nuclear. Now this is just a totally harmless landscape. <laughs> well, for this last photo, we're really going to... Hey, hey, cut that out. Hey, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't I a stinker? Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments get a shout out when I tell you the answer in the next episode. If your money was on Jack Ma last time, you are absolutely right. Once again stolen by Danny Nolan was first place. There's nothing jarring about Snow Pickles landing second, then it's better Nate than never, eking out third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. It would appear that the word of the day is D-O-W-N-T-U-R-N-E-D, downturn. For instance, the decidedly droopy eyes on today's subject are downturned. When frequenting their characteristic state of ascension, the eyebrows on this person are also downturned. Though their nose appears to be braced for derision, so enduringly turned up, is it, and I do not accuse another man's snout of elitism lightly, conversely their gap-toothed underbite is also downturned. How's that for a twist? Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And if you're down with the struggle, consider liking and subscribing. For the fatherland. But this has been the Harry Gold Show, so until next time, stay safe, and God bless. Hey!